Today at Longmont Estate Elementary School because of a strong police presence in the area. Police say a person has been barricaded inside a home off Mountain View Avenue in Harvard since last night and police are still negotiating to get them out. This is all taking place on the north side of the city. So for your safety, you're being asked to avoid that area. And also breaking police uh, still have a large presence in one part of Aurora after a deadly shooting overnight. A woman was killed near Mexico Avenue and South Dayton Street. Officials have not released any information about a suspect. This is the second deadly shooting in Aurora in the past 24 hours. Yesterday, a woman was killed and another woman was hurt in a shooting at an apartment complex near the Aurora Hills Golf Course. Police have not said if they have any suspects in that case. Taking a look outside now from our mile high camera, it's a little cloudy, feeling a little uh, more like winter to start the day with those uh, chilly temperatures and there's some wind in our forecast, Lisa. It's going to get a little windier as the day goes on and you're right. It's quite a bit colder compared to where we were yesterday. Anywhere from 20 to about 25 degrees colder in Denver, Greeley, Fort Collins. Yesterday we were in the 40s and 50s by this point, but as that cold front raced through, obviously the temperatures have dropped and those winds are going to kick up with that front and behind it. And we picked up some decent snow above about 10,000 feet. Some of the high mountain passes like Rabbit Ears Pass as you head towards Steamboat, very icy this morning, and we'll pick up a little more snow, potentially another one to three inches in through the central and southwestern mountains today. In town, it's going to be mainly dry. We might get a quick little light shower later today rolling off the foothills, but we'll be at about 40 degrees by 11 o'clock, and then highs will be right around 48 to near 50 today, so it is going to be on the chillier side today. It does get quite a bit warmer tomorrow, and the winds will also die down. I'll show you that, plus when we could see a little more rain here in town, it was Nice to see yesterday. Yeah. Nice little change of pace from the snow. Yeah, and we're still getting some snow out to the west right now. I'll show you on C470. and It really is affecting the drive, but I first want to start with a pretty serious crash. Where CDOT tells me that this is over in uh, Pine Junction on uh, 285, and CDOT's telling me the southbound lanes or the westbound lanes would be closed down right near Jubilee Trail in this area here. This is over at Schaefer's Crossing. Uh, this is the closest camera I could get for you, and you can see the conditions of 285 right now. It's very snowy all the way down to C470 right now. Now. And as we take a look again at the map over in that area, you can see the heavy stop and go traffic from Ken, Ken Carroll all the way up past about Morrison. Take a look from the camera over there at 285, and you can see some of the snowy conditions on uh, C470 over here and some of the slower traffic on that westbound side. So the weather is definitely affecting the drive out here to the west side right now. The rest of Metro Denver doesn't look too bad. Take a look at the map, like out in the Denver Tech Center. It's actually drying out pretty nicely down here, as well as on 225 and I-70. So we're still seeing some slow and go traffic in some of these areas, but over to the west where that snow continues to fall right now, I'm still seeing some pretty slow traffic, unfortunately, including along C-470 and 285. Aluminum Can Giant Ball Corporation is pulling out of Russia. The Westminster-based company plans to sell its growing manufacturing business there in response to the invasion of Ukraine. The Denver Business Journal reports the company's Russian business division generated 4% of its nearly $14 billion in worldwide revenue in 2021. U.S. officials are skeptical this morning after Russia said it would drastically reduce combat operations around the cities of Kyiv and Cherniv. Overnight, there were more explosions in the suburbs around the capital city. The Pentagon confirmed some Russian troops were pulling away from Kyiv, but officials suspect the troops will simply reposition somewhere else. New images out of Mariupol also show the devastating aftermath of Russia's missile attacks there. Residential areas are destroyed and about 100,000 civilians are still trapped. Images show long lines forming outside grocery stores, too, as people are desperate for food and other supplies. Mm -hmm. Overnight, the U.N. says more than 4 million refugees have fled Ukraine since the invasion started. Amid the ongoing conflict in Europe, a Colorado veterinarian traveled all the way to the Ukrainian border to provide free services for families fleeing with their pets. Yeah, he uh, took Denver 7's Christian Lopez on a Zoom tour mm -hmm. of that area and showed you how international people, people from all over the world are helping. Yeah, and like everyone else, he mm -hmm. wanted to do his part to help, and he told me that it ended up being an experience that he'll never forget. Here's our area where we have a, a treatment table and a little, you know, our little waiting area. John Geller is a veterinarian from Fort Collins. His passion for helping animals brought him here to the Ukraine-Romania border. It was like everybody else just really wanted to help and I knew it would take a little bit, you know, a little bit of a leap out of, out of my comfort zone. 
to do it since I didn't know what I was getting into. His nonprofit Street Dog Coalition set up this pop-up vet tent in an area that sees hundreds of families passing through every day. And they want to leave. They want to bring their pets, but uh, there's a lot of requirements for them to travel through Europe, through Eastern Europe uh, with pets. He's helping them with that offering pet vaccines, pet passports, and whatever else families need to make sure their furry companions can travel with them safely. They really are worried about their pets because for some of them, they just would feel lost without them. And so it's really important for them to know their pets are, are going to be able to travel and are healthy to do so. Well, especially because pets bring us so much comfort. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, we saw some, definitely saw some families today with young kids and, and uh, the whole family is so bonded bonded their pets. He showed us around the Asacha border crossing station where he set up. You can see their their pots. What's for dinner tonight? Well, we have chicken soup. Okay, okay. Lentil soup as usual. I love lentil soup. It has expanded into a safe space where volunteers from all over the world are coming together to help, offering families a hot meal and a place to rest. They get their paperwork done. They, they get warmed up. They eat some food. They get on a bus that uh, is taking them mostly to Bucharest, but maybe other places too. An experience John says has been life changing. It's amazing to see how unifying, uh, even though it's a horrible event, how unifying this war has been. And it makes you appreciate just, a, uh, I guess, a more international perspective. And it was such a pleasure to talk to John and really incredible to see everything that they had set up there for those families. But his generosity doesn't stop there. Back here at home, his nonprofit Street Dog Coalition also provides free services and medical care to pets of people who are experiencing homelessness. Guys, back to you. Yeah, they're a part of the family. All right. Thank you, Christian. Uh, some seniors here in Colorado have also found a way to support Ukrainians right now. Residents of River Point Senior Living Center in Littleton are sewing what were blue and yellow scraps of fabric into quilts. Many of the residents were alive during World War II and understand the humanitarian crisis that it's created. So they want to do what they can to help now, too. We knew what a dictator could do. There are, yes, I want to do something for Ukraine. I want to do something for Ukraine. This is a dream come true. This is the quilter's dream. Very detailed pieces of work here. It will likely take two more months to complete four quilts and then they'll be auctioned off. The group is looking for a place to hold that auction with the proceeds going to a nonprofit and they are still looking for which charity to donate to. So if you have an idea, we have contact information for them at the DenverChannel.com. Well, from groceries to gas, we are paying more for everything these days. And now many people across the metro are paying more for their electricity. XL Energy is changing the way it charges customers. Yeah, we knew the change was coming, but Denver 7's Veronica Acosta found out some residents are still confused about how this is going to work. Excel hmm. customers, they're actually going to be shelling out nearly three times what they're already paying during these so-called peak hours. Those hours being anytime between 3 in the afternoon and 7 in the evening. That window, really important. Obviously, that's when a lot of kids get home from school, parents getting home from work as well, starting things like dinner or even watching TV. So Excel's calling this its time of use program. It's a program you can actually opt out of. We reached out to Excel and asked what rates are if you go ahead and choose to opt out of it. Officials say you pay 12 cents per kilowatt hour in the winter, 14 cents in the summer. If you opt into the program, you pay 10 cents per kilowatt during off peak hours in the summer, 28 cents during those peak hours in the summer. As you can imagine, a whole lot less during the winter. And we spoke with one grandmother who says she's confused and worried about this price hike. Because that's when we're home watching TV. The kids are on, you know, the uh, laptops or computers doing their homeworks. And, you know, the, a lot of energy is used at that time of night cooking you know, dishwashers, stoves, with uh, inflation and everything and everything that's going on in the world that, you know, things are going to go up a little and things are going to get, you know, a little harder and rougher for everybody. And if you're wondering, this only applies to residential customers, not commercial. Again, there is a way for you to opt out. We have some more information on that over on our website. That's the DenverChannel.com. In Denver, I'm Veronica Acosta, Denver 7.
So with everything going up in pricing, how can you save money with time of use pricing on energy? Excel says to be flexible with your schedule. Try to avoid big energy users during peak times. Things like the dishwasher, the washing machine and dryer, the AC. Try to do those things either overnight or on the weekends, which is easier said than done. We know also uh, you won't save a lot of money by not using your TV or computer during the peak hours. Still ahead, with more Americans becoming eligible for a fourth COVID booster shot, the question is, do you really need one? We're taking that question to our state's, or one of our state's top doctors. And it might be cold today, but summer isn't far off when you should start marking your calendar for a return of some of our favorite activities along the Front Range.